Math 1314, Tyler Junior College, section 5.1, two by two linear systems of equations. Solving a two by two system by addition. In the previous video, we solved a system of equations using substitution, but because none of the coefficients were one, our substitution contained fractions, which made the problem, it didn't make it impossible, you could get through it, it would have just been more convenient if we didn't have to mess with the fractions in the first place. I hinted that there was another way to solve the system without substitution. That way, I'm going to call it addition. Some people call it combinations. Uh, there's a variety of words to describe it, but the premise is still the same. You may, observed, you may have observed that this is the same system we saw before. There's something I can take advantage of in this system. The thing I can take advantage of is that the coefficient of the y's are opposites. Positive 2y, negative 2y. How can I take advantage of that? I can add the equations together, provided all everything is lined up. Provided like terms are lined up in the equal signs. My x's are lined up vertically, my y's are lined up vertically, my constants are lined up vertically, and the equal signs are lined up vertically. Everything has to be lined up. If everything is lined up, then you can add entire equations simultaneously. Everybody knows you can add x's, everybody knows you can add y's, everybody knows you can add constants, but you can do them all at once if everything is lined up. So watch this. If we start by adding up everything and keeping the equal sign where it is, here's what would happen. 3x plus 5x is 8x. Negative 2y, positive 2y, negative 2y are opposites. They cancel. There's my equal sign. 7 plus 17 is 24. And just like that, I'm down to a one by one system that I can solve in one move, divide by 8. Boom, x equals 3. No fractions, no substitution. Just happened that my y terms were opposites and ready to cancel. We're not finished. We still need to know what y equals. But we can figure that out by simply substituting what we know into any equation to find out what we don't know. Let's take it to the first equation. Substitute the 3 for the x. We'll get 3 times 3 plus 2y is equal to 7. 3 times 3 is 9. So we have 9 plus 2y is equal to 7. Subtract 9 from both sides. Get 2y equals negative 2 and then divide both sides by 2 to get y equals negative 1. So we're getting the same solution we got before, which was 3 comma negative 1. But we got it a lot more quickly and more smoothly by taking advantage of the fact that the y terms were opposites and everything else was lined up. Under those circumstances, you can solve the system by addition fairly quickly. Add the equations, which means the opposites will cancel, leaving you a single variable. Solve for that single variable. Substitute what you know into any equation to find out what you don't know. By the way, I could have substituted the 3 into the second equation. I still would have gotten y equals negative 1. That's a good way to check if your first value was right. Use the first equation to solve for y, but then turn around and use the second equation. If you get the same y values, then your x was correct and your y is correct. Of course, this raises a big question. This happened to work because the y terms happened to be opposites. But what if they weren't? For example, what if instead of 3x minus 4y equals, excuse me, what if instead of uh, 5x minus 2y equals 17, we had 5x minus 3y is 17? Let me check the time on this video. I know it hasn't gone very long. Taking about doing a break between videos here. Now we'll go ahead and do this again. Anyway, my, my question was, what happens if you don't have opposite terms ready to cancel like the y's? The answer is, make opposite terms. How can you make opposite terms when you don't have them? Well, let's change this 2 to a 3, mess up the fact that these were already opposites, and see if we can fix the problem. Now what? Should we add them now? Well, we could, but if we add them now, we'll get 8x 
minus 1y equals 24, and I can't solve that for one letter or the other because I still have too many letters. We're still trying to overcome the same obstacle of too many letters at the same time. But this time, instead of fixing it by substitution, we're fixing it by setting up opposites that will cancel. Well, we haven't actually set up opposite yet, but we're about to. So without further ado, here's how to solve by addition in general. If necessary, comma, rewrite. So each equation is in the form AX plus BY is equal to C. In other words, make each equation start with the X followed by the Y and then equal to some constant. Both of these equations are already in that form. Number two, if necessary, because in the previous example it wasn't, multiply Uh, one or both equations by quote well chosen numbers well chosen numbers to set up an opposite pair Let's pause for a second and figure out exactly what this means and, and actually pull the move off. Your primary goal in solving a system by addition is to set up something that will cancel, in other words, opposites. If you're lucky, your system already has a pair of opposites, like it did when this used to be a negative two. But in general, you won't be so lucky. So, we'll make some opposites. Now, how can you just make opposites out of nowhere? by transforming both sides of one or both equations. Think of it this way. If these numbers match, they would cancel. I can multiply both sides of an equation by anything that I want. So, I'm gonna multiply to set up some opposites. Now you do have another decision to make. Do I wanna set up the X's or set up the Y's? In this case, let's set up the Y's. Let's focus on setting up opposites on the Y terms. How are we going to make that happen? It's almost a common denominator question. What's a common denominator for 2 and 3? Uh, the answer is 6. But as far as multiplying by well-chosen numbers, there's a way to do this without making any decisions at all. The way to multiply by well-chosen numbers is to take the currently existing coefficients and reverse them as multipliers. So since the top equation's coefficient of y is a 2 and the bottom's 1 is 3, I'm going to reverse those and multiply the top equation by 3 and the bottom equation by 2. By reversing the coefficients as multipliers, you're setting up matching multiplication problems which are guaranteed to have matching answers. But before you multiply, spot check it and make sure that they will come out opposites. Positive 2 times 3 is positive 6. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Those are opposites. This will get it set up. I guess I could just say switch the coefficients and change one of their signs. If I were to switch them without changing signs and use the negative 3, then I do have exactly the same multiplication problem, which would give the same answer, not opposite answers. So for well-chosen numbers, choose a variable reverse their coefficients as multipliers, but change the sign of one of them. In this case, I changed the sign of the negative three to a positive three. Let's see what that will give us. If we multiply the top equation by three all the way across, we'll get nine X plus six Y is equal to 21. If I multiply the second equation by two all the way across, I'll get 10 X minus six Y equals 34. And I have opposites. Now that we have opposites, our third move is to add the equations together. Add the equations together and solve. 
we'll make that one move. I can split it into two. Step three, add the equation. Step four, solve. But let's just do it all in one move. If you're successful, something should cancel. It's going to be the y's. 9x and 10x is 19x. The y's cancel. 21 plus 34 is 55. And 18 out of 19 times, when you divide by 19, it comes out a fraction. This is one of those times. 55, 19 won't reduce. The only way 19 can reduce is by 19 since it's prime, but 55 won't reduce by 19. You can check it. So that is the correct x value. Good thing it didn't show until the end. Oh wait, it's not the end. Because we need to know what y equals. And up until now, our strategy was substitute what we know into the equation to find what we don't know. Don't get me wrong. We could substitute the 50. In fact, let's just do it. I keep saying one well, is a fraction. You can bypass them, but you should still be able to deal with fractions, even though I try to bypass them. No, forget that. Let's just substitute it and see what happens. Step four. Find the other value. And notice I didn't say substitute, because there's actually two ways we can figure out the y at this point. Number one is to substitute. Substitute the 55 9 tenths into either equation and solve for y. The other way to solve for y is to start the whole problem over, but this time get rid of the x's. Remember at the beginning we made a decision to cancel the y so that we could solve for x. I could start over and cancel the x's and solve for the y's. In fact, I'm going to demonstrate that. I've demonstrated substituting a fraction into an equation and solving. Let me demonstrate not doing that. To find y, we need to eliminate x. Oh, this technique is also called elimination, combination, or addition. So let's eliminate the x. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, it's crazy, but there are almost no decisions to make when you're solving by addition. Here's the original 2 by 2 system. The only decision you really have to make is which letter do I want to get rid of. Let's get rid of the x. And remember the technique I showed you for choosing well-chosen numbers to multiply by. Take currently existing coefficients, 3 and 5, reverse them as multipliers. But one of them has to change signs, because if I don't, they'll both be 15 and they won't cancel. Let's make the second one negative. I could have made the first one negative. It doesn't matter as long as these multiplication problems end up being opposites. If we multiply the first equation by 5, we get 15x plus 10y is equal to 35. If we multiply the second equation by negative 3, we get negative 15x plus 9y is equal to negative 3 times 17 is negative 51. The x's cancel. We get 19 y's. Oh, look, we got 19 again. Not a coincidence. And 35 minus 51 is negative 16. Yes. Divide both sides by 19. Our solution is 55 19 comma negative 16 19 So when you're solving by addition, two things to keep in mind. Number one, once you pick the letter to get rid of, if it's not already opposites, you can create, create opposites by taking the pre-existing coefficients, reversing them, using them as multipliers, <coughs> but one of them must change signs. In this case, the negative three became a positive three. If you don't change any signs, the multiplication problems will match and not the opposites. Same thing here, to get rid of the x's, we switch the coefficients as multipliers and change the signs on one of them. By the way, the reason I chose the second one is I was looking ahead. This negative times that negative made a positive, but that was really for nothing because this negative times that positive made a negative over there. Um, but yeah, when you're solving the system by addition, you can either 
well, to start with, set up opposites so that you can solve for one variable, and then to pick up the other variable, either substitute and solve, or start over again, but this time eliminate the, the other variable that you didn't eliminate before. Either approach will work.